So in these many boxes, I have the parts to rebuild the engine to a 1991 Honda CL125. And on this shelf, I have multiple components to rebuild the chassis to a 1991 Honda CL125. So this was the bike when I picked it up. A barn find in which everything on this bike was broken. Because it was in such bad condition, the bike required a full restoration. So I stripped it down to the last nut and bolt. So how about we get to restoring this bike by firstly rebuilding its engine. Now in this box, we have the engine casings to the CR125. And the reason why the engine is looking so clean is because it has in fact been vapor blasted. And I am thinking to make it even look prettier, we're gonna give it a little spray paint. So what I've gone ahead and done is place the engine into this engine stand and then I've masked off the areas which I don't want to paint, such as the, uh, the crank and the inlet. First up, we take this cleaning spray and give the casings a wipe over. Since they've been vapor blasted, they are well prepared as they are, but I want to take extra caution. I then apply this adhesive promoter. Now we are ready for this black enamel spray. I apply a handful of layers, leaving about 15 minutes between each application. And to finish off, on with a clear lacquer. Well then, it's the following day, and I want to say that I am ever so chuffed with how this has come out. Look at that finish. Next task is installing the transmission and the clutch. Now, of course, I'm not just going to go ahead and try and wing it and guess where all this goes. And with the help of this pretty manual of mine, this page here, there is a diagram there which gives you the order and which of the gears or the various gears and spacers and washers, how they all sit on the counter shafts. So with the help of this manual, we should hopefully at the end of this video have a working gearbox. So we begin with installing brand new crankshaft main bearings. However, before I go ahead and do this, I firstly want to prepare the case with some heat. It's a tight squeeze these main bearings. It does seem a bit crude smacking it with a hammer. But I use the old main bearings to take most of the punishment. And of course I repeat the same on the other case. Then the remainder of the new bearings get installed. We are now at the next step, and that is to start installing this crank. Now, some of you may remember how much abuse this took because there was a flywheel attached that was so corroded, and I was cranking the flywheel puller up so much, 
it actually mushroomed the end. And then I was worried that I'd done too much damage. However, I took it to a specialist and they machined it, so now that's, that's proper, as well as checked for the tolerances. And it's all nice and straight. So this is good to use once again. In pops the crank with a little persuasion from the rubber mallet. Once I was happy, I then sat down and got comfortable to get my head around this gear set. I got it all out on the table and studied the workshop manual. With it all laid out in order, I put the balance shaft together one piece at a time. As for the main shaft, that was pretty much together as it came out of the bike, and so was pretty straightforward. So there we go, that is one complete gear set. We've got first, we've got fifth, we've got third, we have fourth, we have sixth, and then we have second gear. With the gear set as a whole, I place it carefully into the crankcase. These are the shift forks. This is a shift drum. With a new gasket in place, and not forgetting this dowel pin, we fit the cases together. and I use my bench vise to help. There we go, case is together and we're in first gear, everything is spinning freely, there's no play. We're not gonna obviously do it up properly yet, we're just gonna leave it together for the time being because I've still got other jobs to do, but we're grooving. It's damn good fun this. So we continue with a couple of remaining bearings and also fit the new oil seals. Next up is a kickstart mechanism. Now this part was tricky. This was a gear shift mechanism, which was very fiddly, and there were many diddy little parts.
So I'm struggling big time with this mechanism. There are tiny little springs and plungers and I need to compress them and fit them into the drum shifter without losing anything. Oh, well, I just got to done it. Hey, finally. This is a gear shift shaft. And lastly, we look to install this main shaft cog and making sure to torque it up to 40 newton meters. Ah, so what do you reckon so far then? We're doing all right, aren't we? Gearbox is all together. However, we've still got quite some way to go yet, but I've been at this gearbox all day. I'm really tired now, it's gone midnight. So I'm gonna to look to end this one here, but in the next upload, we'll fit the clutch and then we'll fit the top end and hopefully the carburetor. So if you want to be sure to see that, subscribe. And with that, I'm gonna end this one here. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you on another one real soon. See you later.